Right, we're going to have a quick look at the Gen 2 Mini Mover. I picked this up so that I could move this boat around. As you'll see, I have a bit of a parking problem, but this here hopefully will uh, help me out of that. Anyway, let's get in and have a look at it. This is what I'm confronted with when I return from the day's fishing. I need to reverse the boat up here because there's no way I can drive up forward and then turn around. And to drive up, I have to hug the hedge on the right hand side there and stay as close as I can to that because to turn the boat in under the awning, I have to swing the car out to the left. And as we get up here, you can see that I've had to dig out a part of the garden so that I can turn the car into there. Now that's not even enough to get it around and in under the awning. So I tend to have to stop around about here and then I physically push it up underneath the awning. That can be quite challenging at times, just depending on where the boat stops as I come up, whether I've got to the hedge close enough and start to turn early enough and so on. So what I did is I've gone out and bought this G2 to get it to go up under there. Anyway, let's get in and have a look at how it all works. Well, it arrived today. This turned out to be excellent really because it was only ordered on Saturday we're on the mid coast of New South Wales, and that's here on Wednesday. Can only be thankful I didn't use Australia Post. Anyway, we'll get it up and unpack it. Okay, time to uh, to open the box and just see what's inside of this. There's a little bit of weight to it. I uh, can't remember if it says on the side here what the weight is. No, nah, no, nah, just the weight of what it can. Oh, hang on, that does. 18.5 kilograms. Sorry, 18, yeah, 18.5. There's a little, little bit of weight to it. regulation polystyrene to stuff up the environment. This looks like the handle with the control knob on it. And, uh, take this out. I'm going for the little bits and pieces first. Oh this is the, the lock. You can lock it onto the onto the trailer if you're going to have it there as a permanent fixture. I most probably won't. I most probably get one of those quick release uh, jockey wheel uh, mounts and just just use that. Uh, the cabling, and I'm going to have to get a longer piece of cable than this. This here is most probably long enough to reach a battery that's sitting on your A-frame. I'll want to run mine up into the Anderson plug that's used for the motor. So we just have to put an extension on that. What else we got here? Yeah, this is the... I'll open it while I've got it here. Where is it? This is the mount that they provide you with. Then bolt that onto your A-frame. Your lock goes on over that. But I'll get rid of that and just, uh, as I say, get a quick release one so that I can take it off and put it in the back of the, the car when uh, the boat's on the water.
got all the, the usual little clamp points down here and then there's the, the wheel itself the motor all in there well you do get a couple of big bolts to put the mount onto your, your trailer the, the wheel's got a let's just get this up here a little bit a little bit of white. So you can see the, the tire's got a bit of tread on it for traction. And for my case, it will be on concrete all the time, so it's not, uh, I'm not going to have to go down the path that some other people who've put reviews up on YouTube have used it on grass, and if it's wet, some of them have had problems. Sand has caused a problem, but mine will be on uh, on concrete all the all the time. This is where you plug your control cable in. And there's your motor there. Anyway, we'll get it all together and get out and test it. Right, this is the challenge to get the boat up this sliding climb here, and then swing it around and park it into there. At the moment this can't be done by the car, there's just not enough room. Well as you've seen there's a slope down to the road from here. So to reverse it up I've got to uh, come up over a rise here. Now I shall use this device here to measure the angle because the people who make the, the G2 uh, claim 7 degrees is the most. Now the boat is sitting on flat, so we'll zero this device out and use that as the reference point. We will then come forward here where the slope starts and we'll do a reading there. And then from where the jockey wheel will be sitting after it's unhitched from the car, which is about here, we'll do another reading to see what the angle is. Okay, let's see. So we've zeroed it in now. This is our reference point. We'll now take it over to here and put it down. And it says 1.75 degrees to there. We'll now move it to where the jockey wheel will be for the start position, which will be around about here somewhere. And it says the angle there is 5.3 degrees. So we'll now hitch everything up and uh, get ready to go. Right, this is how it looks all connected up. I had to drill holes through the front of the trailer so that I could uh, connect it in a position where this handle here could be used because it's got to be able to swing under where the ball joint goes on. I then run it up and I connect it into where the electric motor normally connects through an Anderson plug. Okay, let's see how this goes.
I'm happy with that. That's what I needed to do. You know, I'm not going to have to do all that jiggery pokery to to get it to turn. Uh, handle the incline fine. So, money well spent. <laughs>